And hello race fans, welcome to the Ruby Tuesday 400 version 3, the final race of the Ruby Tuesday race weekend here at Pocono Raceway. We are getting ready for the final group, Division 3 of the Snickers Cup Series, to take to this racetrack for 40 laps. Now, there are a few trends that are going on here. The first trend is the fact that it seems that here at Pocono, cautions breed cautions. It seems like everybody's in survival mode. Whoever survives is the one that's going to have a chance to have an opportunity at the win. Whoever does not survive is going to end up having costly points taken away from them in the standings. So, really, it's all about survival here at Pocono, which is rather strange. A lot of people refer to Pocono as a place where tire wear comes into play, where fuel mileage comes into play, but not here. Drivers have had ample opportunities to come down pit road, get four tires and fuel because of all the cautions that fly. So the question is, will that trend continue today? The second trend, and maybe one of the most important trends, is the fact that we have been on a streak of first-time winners here at Pocono Raceway. Already, we're up to six with Seth Cole taking his first Truck Series win in Division 1, Nick Bergen taking his first Truck Series win in Division 2, then you had Xavier Livingston and Alex Tanker in the Mobile and Cup Series Divisions 1 and 2 taking their first career wins, both of them in their debuts, and then you had, last but not least, Ben Ward in his debut taking the checkered flag for his first career Snickers Cup Series win in Division 1. Barney Ward following up there in Division 2 with his first career win. Will that streak move to 7 here today at Pocono? Also, the last and la but not least trend that's being sent is that there could be a possible Ward sweep here at the Tricky Triangle in the Snickers Cup Series. Ben Ward took the checkers in Division 1. Barney Ward took the checkers in Division 2, and Toby Ward is going to be rolling off in this field in the 86. If that were the case, it would be the first time that a family has swept a race, or swept a uh, division in the NNSCRA. We could make history here today, and we are in the process of making history with the first-time winners. That historic landmark could get moved even higher to 7 first time winners in a row. Michael Harvey finds himself on the pole for this race pretty much ever since Harvey moved into the goodinfo.com paint scheme. He seems to have had luck come his way. He started off at Infineon with that paint scheme, had a very good run there. Talladega wasn't quite as good for him, but here he's got the pole here at Pocono. He may be looking for a victory alongside of him is Aaron Reed in 66. Aaron Reed with the, uh, I believe that's the Jimmy Fund on that race car. Then behind them, we got a new driver making his debut. That is James Boyer in the 74 car. And alongside of him, you got the 98 car of Ryan Juke. So we're going to get ready to get these cars under the green flag as the command to fire the engines has been given. 40 laps of racing. Who's going to survive? Who's going to win the final race here at Pocono? We are moments away from finding out these cars will complete two pace laps. We also got our former winner, Arnold Columbia, who took the win at Talladega in this field. Here's the starting lineup. Five of the top six starters in this race have never yet picked up their first Snickers Cup Series victory. Sixth place Brandon Gonzalez did it in Season 1 at Talladega, but the odds of another first-time winner? Pretty doggone good. We're going to have to see if that's going to be the case, as Michael Harvey, with his first pull of the season, will bring them down, and he will receive the green flag here at Pocono Raceway for the final time this season. Seeing our Season 1 champion, Dougie Shears, moving out of line there. He's one of the drivers we'll keep an eye on here today. Also, Ryan Acosta. As they're starting to bounce off each other there through that turn. Three wide, Matthew Rodriguez putting Liam Irving in the middle. Ooh, I think I saw Arnold Columbia get a piece of the wall back there. That's last week's winner. And the caution is out. Already, the caution is waving. 
as Harvey will lead them out of this turn. Everybody else, well, they were bouncing off each other a little bit. Were Aaron Reed and James Boyer, but they've settled it out. But Michael Harvey, he's just running away with it. Michael Harvey, no doubt about it, he's going to lead us under the caution flag after just driving away from everybody there. And it looks like Michael Harvey and Anthony McCurry will be the top three crossing the start finish line. Let's see who was involved in that wreck. It's like Matthew McMurray, Ziggy Bain, possibly Mary Cole, and Jeff Ehlers. Along with Patrick Strong is Dylan Schwalenberg making his debut in the 87. He was involved. Both Nemco Motorsports cars. Looks like they got a piece of it. Pichu Linden may have also gotten involved. Let's take a look and see what happened to put us under the caution for the first time today. Looks like maybe some contact between teammates puts us under the caution here. Let's see if the 87 gets into the 97 here. Or does Ziggy Bain get into Matthew McMurray? Dougie Shears, Ryan Acosti, see them get together there. Those are two drivers inside the top ten in standings. And, boy, I don't really know how that whole thing started. But nonetheless, we do know who was involved. Oh, Pichu London got a piece of it there as well. Bill Doberpool just got by. Oh, the 87 was upside down. Dylan Schwanberg, welcome to the Snickers Cup Series. Man. And I think Patrick Scroggins and Mary Cole were not involved. They just got held up there, and you see him driving around this wreck. So the drivers that really sustained the most damage were Jeff Ehlers, Dylan Schwanberg, Matthew McMurray, Ziggy Bain, and maybe a little bit of it on Pichu London's car. Let's go back to green. So we're ready to go back to green flag racing. After pit stops, Aaron Williams' team got him out first over Michael Harvey and then Liam Irving. Drivers out after that wreck. The two Nemco Motorsports cars out and done for the day with Jeff Ehlers retiring from the race as well as Dylan Schwalenberg. So we talked back through the top three. Then you got Wyatt Morgan making his debut in the 73 car. He's in fourth. Brad Anami is in fifth. Ryan Duke is 6th, Matthew Rodriguez is 7th, Felix Harris is 8th, Anthony McCurry 9th, and Ricky Hawk completes top 10. Ralph Mason's up to 11th, 12th place is Brandon Gonzalez, 13th place is Toby Ward, 14th is Ryan Acosta, 15th is Jake Rogers, George Roke making his first career start, he's 16th, rest of the top 20 is Rachel Williams, Dylan Pote, Mary Cole, and Seth Cole. Whoa, something's amiss on the Anthony McCurry machine. He's dropping like a stone. Look at this. What What's going on with Anthony McCurry? Everybody's blo blowing by him. Dylan Poteet going up to the high side there to get around him. Whoa, Dougie Shears almost got turned back there. Wondering if Anthony McCurry missed a, missed a gear? Or has he got a flat tire? What's a miss on the 88? Let's see if he's going to come down pit road this time. As the caution is out. I'm not exactly sure what for. We'll find out in just a minute. Now he seems to be up to speed. Dougie Shears is going to get by him for a position. Let's see if he comes down pit road here. No indication. Whoa! Ryan Acosta! Oh, I think he nailed the pit wall. And Brandon Gonzalez was in that as well. Where's Brandon? Did he slide down pit road? Yes, he did. Oh, Ryan Acosta, who's running so well in the standings, he just nailed the pit wall. And we're under the caution flag. Let's take a look and see what happened. Now the original caution flag came out for last week's winner, Arnold Columbia. Just gets turned by Pichu London. Then back up the racetrack. Oh, Bill Doberpool just missed that. Sasha Dawson gets a piece of it, hits the wall. Dougie Shears was also in it. And that's what put us under the caution flag. Sasha Dawson, Arnold Columbia, Pichu, London, and... Um... Who was the other car that just got a piece of that? Who was it? Uh... Dougie Shears. So that's what put us under the caution flag. Let's see now what happened to Ryan Acosta, one of our top runners in the standings. Well, here it is. Let's see what happens. Brandon Gonzalez is just ahead. Dylan Poteet is behind along with George Roke. I wonder if Brandon gets the wall off here and bounces into the 80. Right there. 
80 just kind of turns him. And then Tillman Poteet can't do anything. He gets into the 80. And watch this. This is steel. This is no safer barrier. Oh! Oh, my word. Look, look at that race car. Oh, my goodness. Talk about a hard lick. That car went about six feet in the air. Let's look at it real time. Here's a look at it coming out of the final corner. Oh, man. That literally shot the 80 car back. Oh, my goodness. Hard lick for Ryan Acosta. What a tough break for him. He comes into this race in the top five in the standings, and that's not going to be a good day for the Slim Jim Ford. Like I said, drivers are going to take hard hits in the standings if they cannot survive. Let's go back to green. So we'll get ready to go back to green flag. Racing drivers out after all that that occurred. The only one, Ryan Acosta. He joins Jeff Ehlers and Dylan Schwallenberg in the garage area. Let's show you the way that they line up. I'm just going to fix my mic here. Brandon Gonzalez is the leader. Aaron Williams is second. Brandon Gonzalez, after sliding down pit road, made a pit stop, so he was able to stay out when everybody else pitted. Aaron Reed is up to third. Fourth place is Matthew Rodriguez, and fifth is Rachel Williams. John Dawson, he is sixth. Bill Dober pulls up to seventh. Eighth is Wyatt Morgan. Liam Irvig is back in ninth, and Ricky Hawk runs tenth. Felix Harris, eleventh. Twelfth is Ryan Juke. Thirteenth is Jake Rogers. Fourteenth, Ralph Mason. And Dougie Shears completes the top 15. As we get ready to go back to green flag racing, Brandon Gonzalez is going to put us under the green flag. Gonzalez looking for Snickers Cup Series win number two. We told you Brandon Gonzalez won at Talladega back in season one. If he did pull off the victory, that would end the streak of first-time winners. Aaron Williams right there. Oh, contact, contact, contact with Aaron Reed. Hang on to it. And looks like he's going to. There's a wreck in the back. Anthony McCurry, I think, may have gotten involved in it. Couldn't tell who else. As Brandon Gonzalez continues to lead, now Matthew Rodriguez is up into second. Rachel Williams third. John Dawson fourth. Bill Doberpool in fifth under fire from Wyatt Morgan for that position. As the Eco Fuel Saver Chevrolet will lead them down, and he will receive the caution flag. Looks like Pichu Lennon was involved in yet another incident. Brad and Namia was involved. Anthony McCurry, Sasha Dawson, they may have gotten some of it. Oh, there's a spin up here. It's Ricky Hawk. Whoa, there's a lot of cars. Oh, Ziggy Bain, Patrick Scroggins, Arnold Columbia, Matthew McMurray, George Roke, Felix Harris. Oh, Scroggins just got nailed by Ricky Hawk. Brad and Namia just narrowly missed that. Arnold Columbia may have been involved. George Roke, Jake Rogers, they may have gotten pieces of it. There's Liam Irvig, Anthony McCurry. There's Patrick Scroggins, Sasha Dawson's in it, as well as the Brad Anamia machine. So a lot of drivers involved in two different incidents. Let's see what happened as Brandon Gonzalez paces us under the caution flag. Now this was back around the 23rd position, and right there Patrick Scroggins is going to get the wall. It slows him up, and so Brad Nami is trying to go underneath him. Pichu London is right beside him, and I'm wondering if maybe they just slid up the racetrack right here. Yeah, they did. Both Pichu and Brad move up the racetrack and clip the 81, and it sends the two of them around for a spin. Look at Matthew McMurray, Sasha Dawson, Anthony McCurry coming into the picture. Do they get through it? Matthew McMurray, well, I think Matthew McMurray did get through. Sasha Dawson does make some contact there, though. And Anthony McCurry, I actually think, made it through there as well. But then there was an even bigger wreck back on the front straightaway. Which uh, caused even more damage to the race cars such as these. This was coming out of the final corner. Liam Irvin gets the wall, turns into Felix Harris. Harris comes down and gets contact with Ralph Mason, who somehow is able to keep it going. Seth Cole is into Felix Harris. Then Liam Irvy comes right up into his buddy Ricky Hawk. Dougie Shears gets a piece of it. Jake Rogers gets held up. Look at our pole sitter. Michael Harvey go to the inside there and make the miss. Good job by him. Dylan Poteet just barely gets through. There's Seth Cole. There's Ricky Hawk. Seth Cole we know got a little piece of it. Don't know what the damage is to him. 
There's Liam Irving going to get nailed by Felix Harris. Here comes Arnold Columbia into the picture. Does he get through? Let's see, where is he? There he is. Looks like he's going to make it through. Last week's winner at Talladega. But then here comes... Oh, this isn't Patrick Scroggins. I'm sorry, this is Max Skinner in the 81. I keep saying Patrick Scroggins. He's going to come down. He's going to make contact right there with George Roke. Then he's got Ziggy Bain into the back of him. Matthew McMurray into the back of Ziggy Bain. Anthony McCurry into the back of Matthew McMurray. And then Sasha Dawson into the back of Anthony McCurry. Liam Irving makes even more contact there with Max Skinner. And it just, it just piles up from there. And you watch Max Skinner. He's trying to get back in line. Here comes Ricky Hawk. Nowhere to go. He plows into the back of the 81. And it's, it's just a whole pile up there. Matthew McMurray, Anthony McCurry, Ziggy Bain, Sasha Dawson, Max Skinner, Ricky Hawk, Liam Irvick. They just have loads of damage to those race cars. Let's go back to green. Okay, so we'll get ready to go back to green flag racing. Brandon Gonzalez first on, first off on pit road over Wyatt Morgan, Matthew Rodriguez, Ralph Mason, and Ryan Juke. Drivers out after all that occurred on that last lap. Ziggy Bain, Matthew McMurray, Anthony McCray, Max Skinner, Sasha Dawson, Ricky Hawk, Pichu, London. They join Ryan Acosta, Jeff Ehlers, and Dylan Schwallenberg in the garage area. So as we get ready to go back to green flag racing on lap 16 of 40, I told you the cautions breed cautions, and so this race is stretching out quite a bit here with all these caution flags flying. But we went through the top five. Let's go back from Ryan Juke. We got Dylan Pote in sixth. Toby Ward up there in seventh. Michael Harvey, our pole sitter, is eighth. Jake Rogers is ninth. And Rachel Williams is tenth. John Dawson is eleventh. Bill Doberpool is twelfth. Thirteenth is Aaron Williams. Fourteenth is Aaron Reed. Fifteenth is Mary Cole. Sixteenth is Seth Cole. Seventeenth is James Boyer. Then you got George Roke. In 18th, 19th is Dougie Shears, Arnold Columbia 20th, Felix Harris 21st, 22nd Liam Irvig, and Brad Anamia runs in 23rd, last car on the lead lap. So here we go, green flag back out, Brandon Gonzalez is going to get us back underway, Wyatt Morgan directly behind him, Matthew Rodriguez behind him, battle for the rate... For uh, best battle in the top five is going to be for position number two. Rodriguez wants it. Wyatt Morgan has it. Oh, contact there between Matthew Rodriguez and Wyatt Morgan. But they keep it clean and are still green flag racing here, I think. Yes, we are. Ooh, that's a welcome sight. Well, best battle for racetrack now is going to be for the lead. Wyatt Morgan wants it. As he will go to the inside and he will take the top spot from Brandon Gonzalez. Matthew Rodriguez now is going to take second. Ralph Mason moves to third. Dylan Poteet to fourth place. Battle now on for second as Ralph Mason will go to the inside of the Matthew Rodriguez machine. Ooh, both Ryan Juke and Toby Ward got the wall back there. But we are still green. Slicing and dicing for position they are back there around the... 10th position, that's where you find Aaron Williams, Bill Doberpool, and John Dawson, but we're watching this battle for second, Dylan Poteet to the inside. Michael Harvey, our pole sitter, he's moving up here as well, but the leader is Wyatt Morgan, and he's starting to run away with it. Ralph Mason with the Judas Priest Chevrolet, he's going to try and hang tough on the high side, doesn't look like he's going to be able to quite do it though. As Dylan Poteet will move into the runner-up position now in the Furniture Row Chevrolet. Michael Harvey started this race in first. He's now moved his way into the third position. With that pass on Ralph Mason, who actually got a piece of the wall back there. So too did Matthew Rodriguez. So they're going to lose some spots. Here comes Bill Doberpool in the 75. John Dawson and Rachel Williams. We haven't talked about them today. And they're looking alive here in the top ten. Oh, and there goes Aaron Williams, turned around in the back. Oh, look out. Oh, our Columbia hits Matthew Rodriguez. Felix Harris is in it. Aaron Reed. Brady Gonzalez, I think, got some of it. Dougie Shears is involved. Seth Cole, I think, was in it. 
and the caution is out. No doubt about that. And it looks like it's going to be Wyatt Morgan, Dylan Poteet, then Michael Harvey, Bill Doberpool, and Rachel Williams being the top five. Let's look back at the back of the pack here. Mary Cole was in it. Last week's winner on Columbia, Felix Harris. Matthew Rodriguez, Dougie Shears, who's in the top ten in the standings. That's a tough break for the Red Bull Toyota. Aaron Reed, our outside pole sitter. Brandy Gonzalez, who led us to the restart. Aaron Williams, we know, got turned around. Doesn't look like he sustained that much damage, though. Seth Cole, I think, got a piece of it as well. Not certain. But we're under the caution flag. Wyatt Morgan. The streak could continue. Wyatt Morgan is leading. Let's see what happened. Well, here's a look at what happened. They were four wide here. Dougie Shears, Aaron Reed, Brandon Gonzalez, and Matthew Rodriguez. Oh, Dougie Shears just clips the 64 after sliding up the racetrack. And there you see everybody else get involved. Ryan Juke and Jake Rogers sustained a little bit of damage. Aaron Reed was in it. Oh, Reed goes up and hits the wall one more time. Brady Gonzalez, I think he's going to hit Aaron Reed right there. Yep. And then, watch Columbia come in. He's going to nail Matthew Rodriguez. Mary Cole gets into the back of Columbia. And then Felix Harris gets into Mary Cole. Tell you what, it's not been a good two weeks for Mary Cole making her debut here into the Snickers Cup Series. Wrecked at Talladega, now wrecked here at Pocono. We're under the caution flag. Let's get ready to go back to green flag racing. Well, we had three drivers come into this race in this division in the top ten in standings. All three of them are now out of the race. We got Brandy Gonzalez retiring from the race in 18th. Dougie Shears was one of those drivers who came in in the top ten standings. He's going to finish 19th. Matthew Rodriguez, Felix Harris, they retire in 20th and 21st. Arnold Columbia, he came in in the top 10 standings after his victory last week at Talladega. He'll retire in 22nd. Mary Cole's out in 23rd. They join Ziggy Bain, Matthew McMurray, Anthony McCree, Max Skinner, Sasha Dawson, Ricky Hawk, Pichu London, Ryan Acosta, who came in in the top 10 standings, actually came in the top 5 in standings, he'll retire in 31st. And out of the race in the final two spots, 32nd and 33rd, Jeff Ayler's and Dylan Schwallenberg. Dylan Poteet after pit stops is out in front in the Denver Mattress Furniture Row Chevrolet. Michael Harvey up to second place is our pole sitter. Making his debut, George Roke running very well in third. Fourth place is Jake Rogers and coming out in fifth was Wyatt Morgan. Brad Anamia, Bill Doverpool, Rachel Williams, John Dawson, and James Boyer are the top ten. Pace car peels off and Dylan Poteet's going to lead us down on lap 23 to the restart. Other drivers who were involved in that wreck, Aaron Reed, Aaron Williams, they have made repairs to their race cars, returned to the racetrack, and are still running on the lead lap. Now, the thing about this, all drivers that are on the racetrack right now are insured of finishing no worse than 17th because the 18th place car has retired from the race. And speaking of retiring, the caution flag has not yet retired. It has been brought out once again. As it looks like the top five is pretty much going to remain the same. With the exception of the fact that Jake Rogers has fallen now from fifth back to seventh. He's actually losing some spots. James Boyer is coming up on the back of him. About to make a move. As they come down to the caution flag. And Dylan Poteet will lead us under our... Next caution, I believe the car involved in that wreck could have been the Aaron Reed machine. Let's take a look. Yep, this was back at the very back of the pack. Last two cars on the lead lap, Aaron Williams and Aaron Reed. They just get together here off of this corner. Williams is going to hit the wall. 66 is squeezes him in there, and around they both go. Doesn't really look like a lot of damage. We saw something similar to that in one of the other races. I can't remember which one it was, but cars getting together at the rear of the field. I think it was, may have been the race that gave the win to Ben Ward in Division 1. Can't right off the top of my head remember, but almost the same kind of a thing here, but Aaron Williams, Aaron Reed put us under the caution flag. So we're ready to go back to green flag racing. Aaron Reed decided that his damage, just a little too much to be able to continue, so he has retired from the race. Aaron Williams, who was caught up in that as well, 
has stayed on the racetrack still, so he is still running. Is Williams? You know, Williams, I don't know for certain. He may be able to, with a good enough finish, he could move into the top 10 standings. Don't know for certain. He's had some hard luck at that 64 in the last few races, and he's dropped out of the top 10, but never know. Mathematically, it, it is not impossible, I don't think. Anyway, here's the way they line up as we get ready to go back under the restart. We'll try and go through the whole field because we only have, I think, a total of 16 cars still racing for the win. Wyatt Morgan leads. Bill Oberpool is now second. J Jacob Boyer. I, I've been saying James Boyer. It's Jacob Boyer. My apologies. Is third. John Dawson fourth. Rachel Williams fifth. Dylan Poteet is sixth. Michael Harvey seventh. George Roke is in eighth. Ninth is Jake Rogers. And Ryan Juke runs tenth. Eleventh is Liam Irvig. Ralph Mason, 12th. Toby Ward is 13th. 14th is Seth Cole. 15th is Brad Namia. And 16th is Aaron Williams. But we still have some possible first-time winners in this field. We also have Toby Ward still in this field running inside the top 10 as it's a possibility the Wards could sweep this race weekend here in the Snickers Cup Series. Ben Ward did it in Division 1. Barney Ward did it in Division 2. Toby Ward could make it three in a row. Best battle on the racetrack here, Jacob Boyer. I've been really impressed with this 74 car. He has done a great job in that ride all day long. And he moves to the inside, but now he's going to have to settle back in line as the battle's on for fourth back there. John Dawson, Rachel Williams, Dylan Poteet battling it out for that position. And I think we're still under the green flag. We are indeed. Wyatt Morgan out in front. I'm looking through this pack here, and top five, top six have not been to victory lane in the Snickers Cup Series. Make that top seven, as neither has Michael Harvey, Ryan Juke, he has not, George Roke has not. First one would be Jake Rogers, and he is back in the tenth position. So nine of the top ten drivers have not been to victory lane yet in their Snickers Cup Series career, so... The odds, very, very good that the streak will move to seven as far as first-time winners. And I think the caution just waved. Yes, it did. Oh, and it was Toby Ward. We were just talking about Toby Ward, maybe continuing on the Ward streak of victories here at Pocono. Doesn't look like that's going to be the case. The Papyrus DuPont Chevrolet has spun here on the Long Pond straightaway. Let's see. What happened is, I believe, coming down to the caution flag is going to be Wyatt Morgan. That is indeed the case. Wyatt Morgan paces under the caution flag with 10 laps to go. Looks like uh, contact between himself and Seth Cole around the 12th position this was. And Ralph Mason, I think, is going to... No, I don't think he does make any contact. I think he's able to slide by, but does Brad and Amia get into the back of him? Right there. Yep. Yeah, Brad and Amia gets into the back of Ralph Mason. So that sustains some front-end damage to the Quaker State Chevrolet. Toby Ward gets his car righted, but he has got some front-end damage to that race car. We'll have to see what the strategy is going to be for the 86. So we get ready to go back under the green flag with less than 10 laps remaining in the Ruby Tuesday 400 version 3. So back to green we will go. Nobody retiring from the race after those incidents that occurred. Brad and Amia actually was able to get his car repaired to return to the racetrack. I thought maybe the damage may be too much for the 62, but it was not. Rachel Williams, for the first time today, is out in front in the 5-hour energy Toyota Camry number 79. She leads Bill Doberpool, Wyatt Morgan, George Roke, and John Dawson. That'll be the top five when we get the restart. Jacob Boyer, he is in sixth. Dylan Poteet is seventh. Ryan Juke, he's been very quiet today, but in the top ten for most of this day, he is in eighth. Ninth is Jake Rogers and Michael Harvey, our pole sitter, still in the top ten in that tenth position. Aaron Williams, he is in uh, 11th place. Seth Cole, 12th. 13th is Liam Irving. 14th is Ralph Mason. 15th is Toby Ward and Brad Anamia. He runs in the 16th position. So... Rachel Williams with an opportunity to clinch herself a spot in the All-Star race as well as pick up her first Snickers Cup Series victory as she will come down and receive the green flag with seven laps remaining in this event. Now with 16 cars, you would think they'd be able to mind their P's and Q's and not have another caution come out. However, this racetrack has been known to surprise and I don't know if we've seen our last yellow flag of the day or not. The green flag is out. And I also don't know if the caution were to come out, if that would end the race. 
Battle on just like that for the lead as they head into turn one. Bill Doberpool to the inside. Look out. Oh, contact. Whoa. Careful, everybody. Oh, nope. They go around. That was John Dawson in the 95. Right in front of Ryan Juke. And the leader is going to be Bill Doberpool over Wyatt Morgan. But Morgan looks to the inside. George Roke up into third. Jacob Boyer fifth, or fourth rather. Rachel Williams just slid back to the fifth position on that restart. And out of the final corner, looks like Bill Overpool and the U.S. Army Chevrolet is going to lead him down to the caution flag. We may be able to go back to green flag racing at this point. I don't know for certain. We're going to find out in just a moment as we're going to see what happened to the John Dawson machine on the back straightaway. Now here's what happens. Look right here. John Dawson's just going to get some contact with Dylan Poteet. Jake Rogers goes up into Poteet and spins up into the 95. And then Ryan Juke just absolutely nowhere for the number 98 car to go. And he just gets caught behind the 95. So we'll get ready to go back to Green Flag Racing as it was pretty much a solo car spin for the number 95 Dodge of John Dawson. And the word is, yes, we will go back to green flag racing. And it will be a green-white checker to decide this race. Now, John Dawson and Ryan Juke, they spent too long on pit road. And so they have fallen one lap down to the leaders. Which means we have 16 cars on the racetrack, but only 14 of them are on the lead lap. We will show them to you now. Bill Overpool leading the way. Wyatt Morgan is second. Third is George Roke, Jacob Boyer, he is in fourth, and Rachel Williams is fifth. The top five drivers have not yet got a Snickers Cup Series victory. Jake Rogers, he runs in sixth. Seventh is Michael Harvey. Eighth is Seth Cole. Ninth is Ralph Mason, and Dylan Poteet is in tenth. Eleventh is Aaron Williams. Toby Ward is twelfth. Thirteenth is Brad Namia. Fourteenth is Liam Irvig. And then you've got one lap down in fifteenth, Ryan Juke. One lap down in sixteenth, John Dawson. So we'll get ready to go under the green flag. The leader to lead them down will be Bill Doberpool, but it's a green white checkered finish. If the caution comes out at any point during this green white checkered finish, the drivers will race it back to the line and the field will then be frozen. With the first person crossing the finish line being declared the winner of the Ruby Tuesday 400 version 3. Here we go. Buckle up tight. This is it. Bill Overpool, Wyatt Morgan, George Roke, Jacob Boyer, Rachel Williams, the top five, as the green flag is displayed for what will be the final time today. Not exactly sure what just happened there. Oh, look out. Oh, contact between George Roke and the Wyatt Morgan machine, and the caution is out. Caution is out. They're going to race it back to the stripe. I couldn't tell who was involved. Looks like Seth Cole may have been involved in that. But here we go, Jacob Boyer, he's trying to close in. As he takes second position away from fellow Toyota, Wyatt Morgan. But Dill Bill Overpool, he leads the way. Out of the final corner, Bill Overpool looks like he's going to be the one to come down. He'll receive the white flag and the caution flag. And Bill Overpool extends the streak of first-time winners to seven as he wins the Ruby Tuesday 400 version 3. Who was involved in that last incident there? Aaron Williams, I think, was involved. Ryan Juke sustained some damage. And Seth Cole, he's nowhere to be seen. I think he may have been involved as well. Caution is out. The white flag is displayed. The field is frozen as they will get into their respective positions. The top five looking like this. Bill Doberpool, Jacob Boyer, and then Wyatt Morgan, uh, Michael Harvey and Jake Rogers. We will now see what we were under the caution flag for for the final time here at Pocono. Oh, well, here's a look. Looks like uh, Seth Cole just slides up the racetrack, makes contact with the Ralph Mason machine right there, and he goes up and into the fence. And the car actually, ooh, makes some contact with there with Dylan Poti. Aaron Williams is involved. And Seth Cole is actually up and flipping on his roof. He's sliding down the back straightaway on his roof car flips back over looks like well not on the right side though and that car just spinning like a top down the back straightaway Seth Cole sliding on his roof 
down the back straightaway, and oh boy. Then hits the grass, the car does a spin on its nose like a top, and does land on all four wheels. A tough break for the Tampa Bay Rays Chevrolet, who was running in the eighth position at the time. But Bill Doberpool is going to pick up the victory. Let's go to the checkered flag. Well, not only does Bill Doberpool pick up his first career Snickers Cup Series win, and not only does he extend the Pocono first-time winner streak to seven, he also clinches himself a spot in this year's Snickers Cup Series All-Star Race, which is coming up in two weeks. The checkered flag is displayed, and Bill Doberpool picks up the win here at Pocono in the Ruby Tuesday 400 version 3. Unbelievable race, exciting race, and another first-time winner. How about a great run in his debut for Jacob Boyer, a great debut run for Wyatt Morgan. They finish in second and third. Jake Rogers, fifth, right behind our pole sitter, Michael Harvey, who gets fourth. Then Rachel Williams, George Roke, Dylan Poteet, Ralph Mason, and Liam Irving complete the top ten. So Doberpool wins the race. We will now show you the finishing order and the standings, which have definitely been jumbled up after this event. Thanks for watching. This has been a great Pocono Race Week. And will the streak continue next week at Atlanta? Don't know. We're going to find out, though. Bill Doberpool wins the Division Three Race the Snickers Cup Series here at Pocono Raceway. Here comes the finishing order and the standings. You've been watching the NNS Race Sports Channel. Offline racing at its best.